Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rooks. As you can see, face explosions, bald old Joan, the usual old surroundings. I'm home again. So um, we we got a two hour delay on our plane, on our flight, should I say, and um, the airport gave us um, a card each with $9 a piece on it. Obviously, so, you know, we were there and we were quite hungry. So we got a burger with our money and we bought some duty frees and sort of wasted our time for a bit. Um, eventually, we got, got the plane and um, made good time. So we um, we touched down. Very the smoothest landing I've ever known. Um, got the car really easily. Got home. Uh, picked up a, a ready meal on the way home so that if we got hungry we'd have like it's just a, a Marks and Spencer's gluten-free spaghetti bolognese I really like those so that's what I have anyway that's what I got and then I was trying to watch Formula One qualifying and I kept nodding off this was before we ate I was just honestly I was doing this and um, I hardly saw any of it uh, I just could not stay awake. I guess for me, it was probably about two, three in the morning. Maybe I don't know. By this time, maybe I don't know what the, what the equivalent was. I did have it on my phone, but I don't have my phone, and I couldn't tell you now anyway. But honestly, I was just dead to the world. So um, then I I took off my my shoes and socks, and I saw around my ankles was this kind of water retention I thought oh I've had that before in the heat and then it went discolored and I started to worry about a DVT so I'm gonna keep my eye on that just weird kind of discoloration in that it, the the swelling's gone like the the puffiness is gone but it does look motley so I'm going to keep my eye on that um Obviously, um not had any sleep yet, so I don't want to go do anything about it now. But um, <clears throat> I suppose in a way, you know, it's nice to be home. Um, but it's weird, really, because as soon as you walk in and you, you kind of flop down in your comfy chair, you suddenly start to feel, oh, I'm just too exhausted to do anything. But if you were still there, then you would be forcing yourself to get up and to go out and to do all this stuff. But um, I have put a wash load on already so that we um, could could get some, you know, clean underwear at least for tomorrow. I had a bit of a, not a, a drama, but something happened at the airport that um, we have struggled. We have struggled to maintain the weight of our suitcases on the way out and on the way back. So Gary is stronger than I am. So when the case is packed, he lifts it and reads the, the little weighing thing. And on the way here and on the way back, it seemed like our cases were really empty, you know? They never said anything on the way out. But on the way back, I had all I had in that case really all I had in my cases was the bits of yarn that I'd bought and he said man you guys travel light so I said pardon and he said well, you've only you've only used 11 kilograms when you can have 23 so I said really and he said yeah both cases are really light and I said that's because I've tried to put everything in these carry-ons he said do you want to put some in so i said yeah so we we undid our cases and started shoving a few bits out of the carry-on in into the case but then it dawned on me how much yarn i could have bought if i'd weighed it myself <laughs> if i'd been the one that looked and unless the little weighy thing that we've got is is wrong but i can't see it can't see it somehow because we had a similar experience <coughs> on a previous holiday, weighing our cases. Obviously didn't get any yarn on the way back. 
but I could have got double the amount, maybe over double the amount of yarn that I did get. All those really squishy green chenille kind of cakes I liked, I could have got those, you know. And so much of the yarn that I really, 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 really liked and left behind. Mind you, I mean, it could have cost me a, a fortune. But whatever, whatever. It's yarn, isn't it? Can't quibble about cost when it's yarn. So, yeah. How about that? You guys really travel light, he said. Do we? I said. Well, yeah, look at it. And when I looked, it, it sure enough did say just 11. That was weird. <laughs> and things like shoes and stuff like that. Gary shoes. So yeah, that was the that was the tail. Could have could have had twice the amount of yarn. Oh well. <laughs> so next time, if there is an, an ever a time when we will go long haul flying again, not going to be doing it um, normal kind of everyday um, travel. It has got to be some kind of uh, club class, business class, first class, whatever. Because every now and then, as soon as we sat down, somebody farted and it smelled so, so bad. It actually smelled like the toilet exploded. And, you know, the, the smells of a million travellers all came off to at once. That's what it smelled like. And it would die down. And then a little while later... <laughs> it would happen again and we didn't know if it was the young guy sitting on the end of us or the girls in front of us or there was a german family behind well they like the sausage it could have been them yeah, that's a bit stereotypy in it i know but um i like their sausage anyway didn't have one because obviously i mean i did when i was in berlin but um oh, the, the bratwurst and the curry burst in berlin was lovely Anyway, I'm digressing. Stink. Oh man, did it stink. And um, the guy, who we had a young guy sitting at the end of us. I was by the window, then there was Gary and then there was this guy. And he was only young and he was a, a UFC fighter. I, I knew that because he had a UFC t-shirt on and a cauliflower ear. So obviously he'd been well mauled. And uh, he had a stinking cold. All he kept doing was going <laughs> all the way there. That really tickled. <laughs> mm, that tickled me. But that was all he did. That and blow and sniff and blow and sniff. Oh, ten and a half hours of farts and sniffs. Oh. So that was it. We said that's it. We not going with the cattle anymore. That's what it felt like. I was so cramped, which is why I'm worried about the DVT. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be cattle class, you know, herded in, squashed, and there was no leg room at all. And I'm sure I don't need a lot, you know, but I was kind of shuffling and trying to find a, because you've got your bag down there, you know, your handbag or your laptop bag, whatever you've got under your seat. Uh, it was an awful, awful flight. Not awful in terms of turbulence or anything like that. Just so, so cramped. I felt like I wasn't that cramped on the way out. But then I had an aisle seat. So you kind of just, you know, can lean over a little bit until somebody brings a trolley down. And then you've got to kind of scooch in. But oh, it was awful. Oh, really, really cramped. And, um, yeah... It wasn't, um, it was a very nice kind of, um, it was, we had bits of turbulence, but nothing, nothing bad. And the weirdest thing, it just, we, we, it was like daylight and then dark. It was just whoosh, dark. Um, but for us, it, it was still like afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. Um, by the time we were coming into land, I was starting to get tired. Because that then was, you know, quite late late in the night for us. I think going out, you you get a bit of day back. 
so you know you, you, you go there and you suddenly it's still still light it's still the day coming back you miss a day it you know you catch up with yourself and so you miss you miss sleep basically so i've, I've got to think you know, i think that's why you get jet lag because you you kind of leap over 12 hours roughly like t between 10 and 12 hours of your night time <laughs> it's just gone you arrive back and it's the morning again and yeah it's a bit weird because it's it's too early to sort of sleep when it's dark but then by the time you're coming into land and you you want to start sleeping i did have a little nod but i didn't really sleep much it, plane was so loud like all of the noises i did try and watch a few movies i watched the color purple but the newer one don't like it as much as the old one gotta say that yeah, they made it into a musical and whereas the other one was serious and poignant this one's still poignant but it's a musical and um i prefer the first one but i watched that all the way through and i had to watch films that had subtitles because the plane was so noisy with all the humming and the hissing and everything else that goes on 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 planes that i, I had to have subtitles to back up the dialogue um and then of course your ears start to get a little bit like hear things quieter and quieter and quieter until they pop and then it's back for a little while until it goes again so I watched that and I did try another film. I tried to watch Beetlejuice, but there were no subtitles. I couldn't understand a word they were saying. So I had to get out of that one. Um, and I was going to watch The Born Identity, but same thing. So I opted for The Colour Purple and I don't think I watched another one after that. Um, it's weird how you can't remember. It just seemed like a big, long kind of uh ordeal and the food was terrible oh my god i mean i've had some airline food that hasn't been that bad but my well they gave us a they gave us a dinner and then they gave us breakfast and the dinner was a piece of chicken like a slab a slab of chicken about this big and it had uh what was it there a, a splodge of mash that sort of smeared over the top of it and there was a little tiny bit around the side one long carrot and some broccoli that was it that was all there was with this um no no sauce gravy or whatever and then i had this weird kind of um rice cake it was disgusting could was no flavor to it and then there was this pudding which i couldn't identify it was almost like completely whizzed up rice with some fruit on top so i did eat that because it wasn't horrible it just wasn't identifiable and then for my breakfast i had scrambled egg with bits of tomato chopped up in it to look a bit omelette and a splodge of spinach yep with the egg one cherry tomato that was cooked and some mushrooms which came from a tin but they weren't too bad actually and that was my breakfast along with this seedy kind of bar which just deposited seeds in your teeth big time and some melon six cubes of melon of different types well there was four melon and two um pineapple but that was it. That was breakfast. Spinach. That was weird. And of course, they're only this big. So, you know, fitting all that in them. A little tray. So, yeah. Um, didn't really. I took a big bag of crisps with me. It's a good job I did. That's all I can say. Oh, excuse me. Oh, so tired. But I'm fighting it. <clears throat> I'm fighting it because I need to go to bed kind of close to bedtime to get back into back into things but certainly didn't feel any um untoward jet lag on the way out like I said you just felt like 
maybe you'd been awake a bit longer I and mean, it was exciting exciting times but on the way back it was like where, where's my night gun where's my where's my bedtime gun that was it really um traffic was good on the way home as well didn't have any traffic and the awful traffic situation around here we didn't get any of that because it was uh saturday gary thought we were going to get back on friday i'm like i'm sure it's going to be saturday because <laughs> we left on friday he thinks it's good and then when i look i look look see it's saturday so this uh weekend um obviously not today but tomorrow i'm going to go outside and pack the orders that i need to send ready for them to pick up on monday so anybody who's ordered from me while i've been away it will get done tomorrow and picked up on monday um yeah so that's my that's my tomorrow that and doing all the washing basically anyway um yeah sorry i'm a bit a bit tired <sighs> um it's only because you know it, it's now like um probably getting on for the early hours of the morning around about 5 a.m or 6 a.m something like that <laughs> for me in my head um but it isn't it's not um oh yes yeah, formula one tomorrow as well hopefully i'll be awake enough to watch it so yeah i haven't got um my uh, picture um my calendar out yet on oh, my um my mom jokes i will get them sorted out but um i don't i haven't got a clue where i put everything at the minute probably down there but um i'll be back to normal more tomorrow so don't forget to watch out for any other yarn videos that might pop up for any other yarn shops that i may or may not have visited while i was over there um probably now wishing i could go back and get more yarn because i did feel like i've been cheated out of some with the uh the case weights but never mind at least it saved me a few pennies <sighs> never mind the, the note to self make sure you double check weights in future or all, all those things make sure you you check it check them um fluffy i thought would disown me when i got home but no she was out there and as soon as she saw me her little face kind of lit up and she started to meow and then she came um around the front of the house and demanded to be let in so she could get strokies from me and then she went and eat had some food you know which was already there but and she kept meowing kept meowing and like i don't know what to do with myself mummy's home you know bless her at least she was okay you do worry about that, you know, because, you know, you've gone all this time and you don't know what might have happened while you've been away. But everything is fine. The house is still standing and the cat is still meowing. And, um, yeah, everything is the same as it was. So that's cool. Anyway, I am going to get off and upload this video and perhaps watch a little bit of a Gogglebox. I don't mean the program called Gogglebox. If you're from the UK, you'll know what I mean. I mean the TV. Going to watch a bit of TV and probably nod off with Gary. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one. So to all my 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 um, peeps over there in the US, the video is going to be a different time again now. Because um, my morning will be back to the UK time of morning. So yeah, just have to... They might not pop up the same for you as they were... And my afternoon videos will probably be evening videos for you guys. Uh, weird, huh? Yes, it is. Anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, thank you so much to everyone who sent me safe journey home messages. I was reading those at the airport. And, uh, yeah, gave me something to do before we boarded. Uh, do you know what annoys me about planes? And I know I said I was going and I haven't gone and Jane will point this out. Um, logic states that when you board a plane, the people who sit at the back of the plane should go on first. So that when the next lot come on, those people are sat or even if they're putting their stuff in the overhead locker, 
they're not in anybody's way because your seats are in front of them. And then the next lot of people are in front of them. Then they should go on because, you know, logic dictates the first lot of people are probably sat and everything. And the second lot of people are just finishing up and you're in front of them anyway. So they're not in your way. And then you get the next row, you know, and then the next. And then you get the people from the front of the plane get on last because everybody else is seated and no one's in anyone's way. They can just get on. What do they do? What do they do? You bet yeah, you, you, I bet you can, you know, guess. They put the people at the front in first. And then they ask the people behind them to go in. So all those people at the front are blocking up the aisle. So you can't get up the aisle. And then the next people behind those people who are the next lot to go on are being blocked by the first lot of people and the second lot of people. So you're standing there like spare parts at a wedding and you can't get in the plane because everybody's in the way and the aisles are all clogged up with people trying to get their stuff in the overhead lockers but bored from the back you know it's just it's, it's just sorry my face is exploding I felt like it I would explode to be honest with you because it just seems logical bored from the back and then go forward you know uh I don't understand. I don't. Anyway, that's my moan. <coughs> my little whinge. My little whinge. I, but, you know, I had an aisle seat on the way out, but they gave me a window seat on the way back. And usually I like them, but I felt trapped. <coughs> I felt trapped that I couldn't get out to the toilet because the kid kept falling asleep. I had to keep waking him up so I could get out. And then I had to climb over Gary's seat and his seat just to go to the loo and then disrupt everybody coming back. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, you know. If it was just two seats, me and Gary, it would have been fine. I had hoped that that third person would have had a look online and decided to go and get a window seat or something. But I don't think he was tech savvy, so that didn't happen. So I just had to put up him sniffing and snotting and some bird farting like, oh, that was absolutely gross. An eventful journey, an eventful journey. Rather pungent and full of germs. <laughs> Reminds me of Lee Evans when he said about 40,000 farts all trapped within the aeroplane and they open the doors and it goes. <laughs> Probably true. Anyway, I'm going on that note. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye for now. Oh, and hopefully I won't be tired then. <laughs>